Well, bring Colson up and anybody you want to bring with him. Um, this is one of the things I really enjoy in ministry, baptizing people. Stand right up here. I'm going to take this off. I said I had some questions asked. And the first I asked is on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? In other words, in the old days, you used to say, do you reject the devil and all his works? Are you going to be a good person? Yeah. You're going to be on the side of the angels. <laughs> okay, that's... Now, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever forms they present themselves? In other words, not only are you against things that are bad, but you're going you're gonna to work against things that are evil and wrong. Do uh, you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, Mallory, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? In other words, are you a Christian? All right. <laughs> and will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself to profess his faith openly and to lead a Christian life? Right, that's a very important one because while baptism itself carries a lot of power with it, um, the, the fullness of baptism is, is reached when you're participating in the church and not trying to do a little ranger type of Christianity, which a lot of people do, and that's not what God wants. So you're going to get him in church and raise him up in church. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm asking you this question because he, he's still a little too young to understand, but, but the point is that as his mother, you have responsibility for him given by God, and you're, you're going to raise him in the right direction here. And them too, huh? <laughs> yes. Now, do you... As Christ's body of the church, we affirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. You do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and according to the example of Christ, we will surround also in the community of love and forgiveness and we may grow in the service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple. Walks in the way let us join together in professing the Christian faith that is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now, this is the tricky part. Okay. We'll see how he handles being held <laughs> by someone else. Oh, nice. All right. Nice people. He's a good person. Wow. You're a live wire. I like you. <laughs> what name is given to this child? Wilson. Wilson. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. Wow. Good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> I'm going to pray over him. The Holy Spirit work within you and being born through water and the Spirit who may be a faithful to see the cycle of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Now, through baptism, we are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus with joint thanksgiving. We welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Now, I commend this child to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. <laughs> Thank you. Scripture today is Matthew 25, 1 to 13, uh, continuing our exploration of the parables of Jesus. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Well, I want to tell you a little, little story. Nothing, nothing too outrageous, but several years ago, Barb and my son John and I took a trip up to the maritime provinces of Canada, and we were in Nova Scotia, and then decided we were going to <clears throat> ride the ferry um, across the Bay of Fundy over to New Brunswick. So we went to a town called Digby, uh, Nova Scotia, and we went to the ferry uh, place, and it was a big ferry boat, monster-sized thing, and, and, and we bought our tickets. And then we had a couple hours before the ferry was supposed to leave, so we went around town, went out to a lighthouse, enjoyed the area. We got back, it wasn't probably supposed to be about half an hour before we were supposed to leave, but we were plenty early. We got there and they said, well, don't you know you're supposed to get on the ferry boat an hour before, before it leaves? And no, we hadn't seen the sign, but um, they, they let us on. But we were the last ones in line, and, and it, was, it was a near thing, uh, but we did make it. But we almost missed the boat. As the saying goes, we, we almost missed it. And that's because we weren't really ready to go at the right time. Now this parable from Jesus, he, he's talking about um, the end times. He said, someday this world as we know it, and the way it's run right now is going to come to an end. And, and something new is going to happen. And the Lord's going to reign. And he's going to return. And, and all sorts of wonderful things are going to happen. And you, God's people, need to be ready for when the Lord comes. And this parable was addressed to people in churches. Churches in general. He said, some people are going to be ready. Some people aren't. And by ready... Um, he's talking about being close to the Lord, and knowing the scriptures, and being filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and walking with God, and, and taking time to uh, be prepared for all sorts of... The world's going to be a crazy place before the Lord returns, and you need, you're going to need to have a good relationship with Him uh, in order to get through those hard times. And, and, and you just need to be prepared. And, and don't... Don't be unprepared. Uh, because you might miss the boat. And, and you don't want to miss the boat. Um, that's true about the return of the Lord. 
someday for all of us. So, scripture says a lot of people just aren't going to be ready when it, when it happens. And we don't know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Jesus said it's going to be a time when no one's expecting it. Uh, no one knows the day or hour. So you always have to be ready. Be prepared. Kind of like being in the army in a sense. So when you're in the army, uh, you always have to be ready to go into action. You need to have your uniform and, and, and your gun and whatever and, and, and everything else you, you need, good to go. And it's the same way with, with the Lord. You need to be good to go. Um, pretty simple, pretty basic. I was thinking also. Well, the loss of Denise makes me think, reminded me that someday the Lord's going to come back for all of us. But even before he comes back for all of us, he comes back for people individually. And it's going to be the same thing. You always need to be ready because you never know when that's going to happen. We all hope to live a long life healthy life. We know we have to leave this world someday, but we don't want to leave any earlier than, than, than what we, we'd like to leave. And, and we hope we're going to have a long life. But we don't know that. Uh, not unless the Lord tells us that. We, we, we hope we do, and most people live pretty long lives, but, but sometimes things happen. And, and, and our lives are not as long as, as what we would hope for. The Lord comes for us. And we always need to be ready for that. Even if you're not thinking specifically about the general return of the Lord for all, in all creation someday, He will be coming back for you. And you always need to be prepared. You don't, to, I guess you might say, you don't want to miss the Lord. Son John says, I'm very good at preaching short messages to the point. Well, this is this is my short message today. But it's a very important one. Don't miss the boat. Be prepared. Read the signs. Read, look at the scriptures. Know the instructions. Know what you're supposed to be and know what you're supposed to do. Be ready. Because no man knows the day or hour. So Heavenly Father, we thank you that you didn't leave us uninstructed. You told us to be ready, so help us to be ready, Lord. It, it's easy to put things off and think we, well, Lord, we don't know when you're coming. We haven't come back 2,000 years already, and a lot of people... I think you're never coming back. You are coming back for all of us someday, and we need to be ready for that, but we also need to be ready for as individuals in all kinds of different ways. We always need to be close to you and walking with you, Lord, so, so we're not caught unprepared. So, by the power of your Holy Spirit in us, and through the inspiration of Scripture, Lord, enable us to be prepared, always ready at a moment's notice for whatever you send our way. And I'd say, Lord, not just for, for, the, for the hard things, but even, Lord, we need to be prepared for the good things. Sometimes good things are there to come our way, and we're not ready for them because, because Lord, we're, we're just not prepared. Help us to always be prepared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.